Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to cover the topic about a new standard created by Namul which is called as Module Type Package MTP which is um, going to use for the integration between PEA and the POL. What exactly this MTP is and why it is needed? Everything is working fine uh, as of now, correct? Then why we need this new standard? Let's get started. Uh, why exactly Namud has introduced this MTP and with what benefit it is going to bring? So MTP or the module type package is initiative to reduce the time which we spent during the integration between two systems, UOP and the DCS, basically. So it is a non-proprietary description of the module for the process automation. So what it will do, the automation who are compliant with the MTP, okay, it will make integration easy and it will be a OEM independent integration and automation basically. So that is the main motive to bring this module type package. So if you see a lot of big players have been associated in this like ABB, Immersion, Honeywell, Yokogawa, all the four major giants of the DCS. Now if I go to the PLC side, so if you see here, we have the Siemens, we have Schneider Electric, we have Rockwell Automation, Vago, Bake Off, Phoenix, all the major players in the PLC world, HEMA, so all, all the major players of the PLC worlds are also there. If we talk about the industries, so if you see we have Merck, Sartorius, Bears, BSF, Air Liquid, so all, all the major industry players are also there who are supporting this initiative. Okay. So it means that it is going to bring some changes and it is going to bring some benefit for the OEMs, the designers and also the customers, correct. So let's see how exactly and what exactly we are doing right now and how it is going to make those steps easier. So how we do our current integration philosophy works. So we have a manufacturing unit where we have a centralized system called DCS. Now, customer buys different UOP from different vendors. So, customer buy UOP 1, UOP is basically unit operational unit. Okay. Now, UOP 2, UOP 3 from three different vendors. What exactly these vendors do or the OEM do? They provide uh, exchange table documentation and the HMI visualization, how exactly they have created. Then, these are given to a DCS vendors. Correct. So DCS vendor take these files, they start working and they develop all these visualization and exchanges in the DCS. After that, what happens? First, with each UOP, we go for the integration fact. Correct. During the integration fact, we found a lot of issues uh, that the signals which we have defined is not matching or the mapping is not happening or the data type is not able to a map between uh, both the system. So a lot of issues are there. We keep correcting those issues and it works. And then after that, after correction, then all these you have get basically uh, instanced, instantiated into the DCS. So what are the problems as of now? We are locked by the vendors. So the OEM, what they decide, want to exchange the data or uh, in the format what they want to do, only those things will be there. We have variety of products so variety of communication protocols variety of exchange mapping if we do a small refactoring or reconfiguration it is going to bring again a challenge correct so we face this issue currently and all the products are very customized so there's no standard product this can happen also now and that is what is happening so we have a very customized product lines which brings to a high engineering time and it also brings to a, a high cost to go into the market. So what Namu did, they introduced a new standard which will be based on a, stand, a standard architecture which is on the OPC UI architecture. 
and they divided the whole thing into a different uh, small modules like we have alarm management we have hmi we have maintenance diagnosis we have safety security we have process controls okay so alarm management alarms an event of a pea system which will be again based out of opc ua alarms and event so hmi module what exactly it will do is the human machine interface of a pea same thing we have the maintenance and diagnostic of a pea safety and security of a pea and service and controls for process of a pea and they have also kept some open thing that for the future pea but we can introduce so we heard here a lot about pea so what exactly this pea is so in the definition of a mod mtp standard uh, what namo has done they have divided the whole modules into three category which is one is the process equipment assembly which is an autonomous model of process unit which will consist of all the functional equipment assemblies components so it is just like the uop which we were using earlier okay then other orchestration layer which will do all the orchestration of this module system which is the pol similar to the dcs so dcs are they were using and then the mtp which is a formal description of all the interfaces and the function of automation tech technology of a modular process unit so all the exchange tables and everything uh, which we were using earlier will get removed because this mtp will consist everything so let's see how exactly uh, this the structure of modular production plant has been defined so we will have component then uh, we will all the component will be combined into a functional equipment assembly the whole functional equipment assembly will be combined into a process equipment assembly and then it will be called as a pea and it will have the infrastructure and then we call that as a model plant which will be going to the pol which will be connecting to the pol so how exactly this will be connecting so it will be utilizing the mtp file uh, which is based on the automation specific xml which is called as automation markup language aml to define each piece of the equipment so it will have like a services uh, like we have the heating agitation ph control loops all the those part which is doing for the equipment module part will be come under the services we will have a data which is like all the control modules which will be just sending uh, the data like uh, uh, process value with all those things uh, will be there in data visualization all the graphics alarms event and the connectivity so opc ua connectivity and tag information will be there so let me show you how exactly uh, we can do so i am using here a vago uh, ide e cockpit so they are providing uh, a 30 day uh, evaluation model so if you want to try hands on uh, you can try it on uh, because uh, a lot of software are not providing that so thanks to vago who is giving this uh, on a free service and also uh, and the siemens has given but uh, uh, some modules to uh, to visualize and they have created also uh, some of the uh, uh, mtp files and shared on in the com siemens community so that also we can utilize i have tried with these two so i'm i'm going to show you how exactly we can get all these things done so let me open and create one project so uh, we need to uh, add the mtp library into the vagoi cockpit okay once we add the whole uh, library will get instantiated there and when we will have all the documentation and everything okay so we can see that we have an drive and and as i was saying earlier that uh, why exactly we need to learn now the specific uh, of uh, oops concept because here those concepts are getting utilized a lot in the mtp so this is the whole structure if i you see i just uh, made that available into uh, a fun a block uh, in the ladder logic so let me show you uh, also the siemens so we can compare exactly how they are trying to achieve this so let me load this project okay let's go to the project view so in the siemens if you see uh, they have given a mtp block library so it is a password protector we cannot go inside how exactly it is implemented but we can see the structure 
so that is what exactly the main thing is so let me keep them side by side so uh, let me uh, go to the structure so if we see uh, on the Siemens the utility defined and the function block which is defined on the Vago both has the same naming conventions so earlier we used to have a different naming convention from Siemens or another convention from Vago or another pills vendor but here they are maintaining the same structure and the same naming convention also so like WQC V uh, VHCL min, VHCL max, so all those naming convention are followed exactly the same and the structure also they are maintaining the same means uh, we cannot differ because we are binded with the normal standard of the MTP so we have to be following the same so they have defined all these things in their standard documents and that is what every vendor has to follow whether it is from Siemens, Vago, Codices, Twincat, uh, Phoenix or PAC system they will be having the same naming convention followed so if we go to the documentation we see that we have the name of that module also so if you see the name of the module also they have the Anamon, uh, Anaview, Winmon, Anadrive so all the modules names are also of the same so there is no difference also in those those naming part also so I will be putting uh, in the description so you can uh, uh, from where you can get these files and where, how you can do so it will be easier for uh, you to understand and go through it uh, with the documentation so it uh, it can give you more insight and maybe I will covering more these things uh, in upcoming videos uh, so uh, this is how exactly uh, we can see that when we generate all these files from any of the vendors it will generate in the same structure and the, it will be easy for the POL to integrate it uh, basically so now uh, what I'm showing here is are the different services which is created so as, as I explained so it will have a services it will have data view it will have uh, alarm event it will have the OPC connectivity so all those things if you see in the Siemens part uh, because they have created a project so everything is covered in, in the same manner okay so let me show you how exactly this is getting done so now we have the one PA from three different PAs, all are MTP compliant. So it will go to MTP generator file, it will generate a GIF or .MTP file. Okay. And this MTP file will be now given to the plant engineering team. They will import this MTP file, they will work on few aspects because it is still not fully automated, but most of the things are automated. So they will do the integration, HMI generation, orchestration part, and then they will give it to the into the POL and then all this PEA will be getting instantiated and if you see uh, we will have the same visualization what is was given by the each PEA system so that is the basic thing so let me show you how exactly we generate those MTP files so I'm again using Vago so if you see this structure this structure is very important and we have to actually uh, fill all the details uh, to have so like sizes of the your text the boxes everything so once we configure this particular visualization so i have created one visualization okay and i have also one block so we can go in the vago to export and module type package export so when we are exporting it will uh, okay i got some compilation error okay let me let me close that compilation first So this one and okay here the question marks are there so let me remove let me compile it okay the question marks are still there for this particular box so okay let me remove this block anyhow so I'm giving just for an example let's compile it down So now when we export this it will ask that okay visualization also correct we can need to give the file names and say export so after giving the file name it will again ask us to give the file name here we will give the file name here and when we export it will get exported in the .mtp format and the same mtp file uh, will be utilized by uh, mtp file generator or the compiler uh, by the POL systems so they will utilize this MTP file we will send this to POL 
systems they will compile it and then they will have this particular file into their system and it will be the same visualization and interface will be there so this is just an example i'm giving here uh, so how exactly this is defined as i showed so you can also uh, utilize uh, this particular thing and here it is divided into four category so active element so this is how the structure will be so if you see uh, the ana mon is getting uh, inherit from the ana view so inheritance is there abstract classes are there so all those things when you are developing this library uh, maybe the oops concept will come into picture and it will help here more to get because that is the whole structure actually it is following so it is divided into four four category okay so if you see here uh, the ana drive it extends from active element so active element is nothing but it is just for all the drive modules like motor valves all the actuators will come under active element then we have diagnostic element we have uh, indicator element and then we have the operator element so where operations part we we can do so that is how the whole structure is defined so as we have this defined structure we also have the services which we need to create for the mtp so because uh, normally what we have we have uh, the state based control module for the process plant so it is divided into two parts which is control of the service that follows a defined state model so those who have worked on the gas turbine systems there actually we follow exactly the same state based model for the whole gas turbine sequencing so that sequence is very important to the gas turbine systems and also when we are doing with the batch process correct so there also it is very important and then we will have the orchestration for these services which will be done by the dcs so there are different operation mode in which it should be working so when we do state based control system so one is the automatic one is the manual so in automatic every all the sequence will happen automatically without any intervention of the op operators predefined so another is a manual operator which is some of semi in the semi automatic we have like some process automatized then at some press operator has to do some action in order to go to the next step so that is the manual operator to do and then we have the third operation mode when we do a state based control uh, we have the third operation mode which is manual local or the offline mode so offline when we say that there is service is not at all running we cannot utilize it or manual local means everything is done locally from panel itself so no hmi nothing so these are the three operation mode when we do for the state based control model of process plant correct so i'm just giving here how exactly the service in the plant run so we have the idle state we have the running state so we when we go from one state to another so state and the transition correct so we come to one state and then we transition to another so that is how the state model works so we say that pause then it is going in pausing and the transition happen to the paused correct so that is how exactly the state flow is working so and for each uh, like stopped stopping aborted aborting so first it goes into one stage until that stage is not completed it will not say that it is has been done similarly we have for the procedure so there is a procedure also correct so we define a sequence of steps so that is what it is defining here so when we give fill abort then the state says okay fill aborted fill reset then the state says that okay fill idle so all those things are defined as a procedure so this is like a small procedure of the dosing for the stop so this is how it will go so when we have multiple services how exactly the orchestration layer will do so this is on the orchestration layer part so orchestration will give a start for one service service will run once the service run say complete then the complete will come to the orchestration layer and then orchestration step 2 will start to start the service 2 the same thing it will go so this is how exactly this whole uh, service model works so as per now uh, they are saying mtp development is uh, compatible with agile approach so we have the requirement specification refinement function definition demos and verification and refinement so basically it is also following the agile approach of working so nowadays we have moved a lot of thing into working in the agile mode correct so safe and agile are coming into picture so these are the some initiative already done so merk has already uh, done uh, with 
the the modular plant with the MTB services. Uh, I guess they are the first one to do uh, uh, there. Then uh, there we have the Yokogawa and Siemens collaborated to work uh, with other uh, uh, systems to work with the via MTP. So they have also uh, worked on on this concept. So there are a lot of things happening, and uh, they are trying to show uh, showcase how exactly this MTP work. And they have also defined all the different uh, standards. Uh, documentation is there. So we can find this all from the Namur and we can and go through the document. Of course, there's a paid or paid ones. Uh, so we, almost the top five are the major documentation which we can refer to develop the libraries. So let's see how exactly it is going to change the market and uh, we will adapt to a new standard. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video. Uh, see you in the next one.